On the corner of 56th Street and 6th Avenue sits the oldest high-end restaurant in downtown Kenosha. Why not a hip wine bar and bistro has seen the rise, stall, and reinvigoration of downtown and, really, of Kenosha itself. Here, you'll find fine food with great service, a selection of over 50 wines by the glass or bottle, and a growing menu of craft cocktails. The folks at Wine Knot have created a fun atmosphere where food and drinks, whether you dine inside or outside, all come together for a memorable experience. If you buy a bottle of wine, be sure to deposit your cork in the appropriate receptacle on the ceiling. Brian Haberski has been with Wine Knot almost since the beginning. While wearing many hats over the years, Brian is now the executive chef and general manager. It's his meatloaf on the menu. Do yourself a favor, order it. Andy Bilski, a well-seasoned bartender who has established a stellar reputation serving adult beverages in several establishments, is bar manager. What, what was the reaction? How did people uh, accept the place? How long did it take for people to start getting what you were doing? Uh, it took a while. Um, when we first opened up, it was a rocky start, I would say. Um, by the time I took over, I was just a chef at the time. Okay. I took over as the chef and what happened was is there was a GM, there was a bar manager, there was a chef. GM ends up leaving. I took the responsibility of the GM also. Uh, and bar manager ends up leaving. <laughs> when I took over as the GM also, I got the first chance to look at the numbers and realized that we were probably going to go out of business within the next six months. Oh, geez. <laughs> so I thought it was a terrible idea that I even took the job. <laughs> so the first thing that I decided to do was, I mean, we had no money in the bank, nothing. I decided we're going to lower the prices, which most people would tell you, maybe not the best idea. You need money in all that other thing. So the very first thing I did with my new menu is I made everything under $20 at okay. the time. So that, okay. this was, you know, 14, 15 years ago. So. Well, 14, 15 years ago in Kenosha, that's probably a pretty good idea. Yeah, so I lowered the price. We were at the same price point as like an Applebee's and a Chili's and places like that. So it was a risk. It ended up, I guess, paying off. We're still in business. And, right. you know, I've been slowly able to add to the place right you know it's been a long process but uh, so you're the first really the first place down to, uh, in Kenosha really to start experimenting and showing people better wines uh, is that for me oh I'll take it thank you uh, so that's the the first chance to, to uh, really get people trying something different with wine and, and higher in food yeah um, did like you said it took a while for people to really catch on yeah. so how have you seen people's taste change because I'm sure the menu is a lot different yeah than I mean well I oddly enough there's still some items that when I first took over and put some items on that are still here to this day which the meatloaf the meatloaf the halibut, <laughs> things like that uh, but as for the change, I think that I remember when we first opened up, or when I took over, that you really couldn't have a bottle of wine that was more than about 30 bucks a bottle on the menu. Right. And so fast forward, and at that time we probably only had about, I don't know, maybe 25 wines by the glass. Okay. And so fast forward to today, now that number's up to, uh, I think we're at 50 or a little bit higher than 50 uh, wines by the glass that we sell. Okay. 
and now we're selling an ounce of wine for 25 bucks. Okay. So okay. with this Corvin system that we have, we can sell by the ounce. It's, right now we have Cast 23, which is like a, I don't know, it's like a 99 point rated wine. Okay. Uh, and we're selling it for 25 bucks an ounce. And, and people are buying. People are buying. Yeah. So yeah, so your inspiration is, is more what you're feeling at the time that you're making the video. It really is, yeah. yeah. Whatever I just feel like, whatever, you know, sometimes I'm really excited about Japanese food and there's a couple items on there sometimes it's German it's just all but then you're stuck with it for six months and I got it for six months yeah. <laughs> that's true yeah. First, uh, where do you see things going first of all Kenosha especially downtown but Kenosha itself um, as far as well, gastronomically uh, the tastes and things like that and also how do you see things going just in general uh, around here uh, I can remember probably three years ago talking to people and everybody asked me what I thought of downtown Kenosha and all that. And I would always tell them that we're right on the cusp right now. Like it's either going to fail miserably or it's going to work and downtown's going to be great. And I would say now I could definitely say downtown's going to be great. I think that if we get more restaurants down here, that would be a big plus. Yeah. If we could get probably. I'd like to see at least like four or five more restaurants down here. And, and I think like, that would help everybody. I think that right. it would just be great for downtown. It's funny because there's some people that are afraid of competition, but yeah. but somebody who really understands the yeah, business. Yeah, no, it's absolutely. You, the you, best need, thing the, you need the competition. Absolutely. Uh, and, and something very different, you know, because you have the wine bistro uh, that here. Yeah. You've got Shazzy B a couple doors down, which has their own yeah. thing that they're doing. An Indian restaurant would be amazing. It would be. Uh, and I'm going to give away uh, an idea that I've had that I wish I, if I had the money, I'd do it. And that's just a, a street taco place. Street taco place would be great. Also, would be fantastic. Yeah. Especially one that's open till like three in the morning. Yeah. Because you you need that for the bar crowd. Yeah. No, there's <laughs> definitely. I mean, there's. It's funny because I think there's still people out there that don't see. That don't come down here. Like they don't understand. Like they'll, you know, there's people who think like, oh, downtown's dead, whatever. Actually, if you came down here, you'd see that, especially during the summer, the streets are packed. Yeah. Like, all the restaurants are packed. There's an hour and a half wait. Yeah. There's a lot of people, though, that just in their head, downtown was bad 15 years ago. Right. And it's still in their head, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, what which about, is going to help. What about, uh, uh, why not now? What, what do you envision uh, uh, as far as... Where are you taking things? So is there going to be expansion? Or are you just going to keep focusing on this, this uh, place? We always toy with the idea of expansion. Um, but it took us 13 years to get booths. You know? <laughs> we, had, we still had the original chairs in here. I mean, that's the only reason this place succeeded. It's because this place opened up with very little money. Yep. And improvements took, you know, 14 years. Right. Like, a lot of places will open up a restaurant. And they'll spend a million bucks. Yeah. And then not figure out why they can't stay open more than two years. Right. You know, you got to start, especially in a like a small mom and pop restaurant. You got to start small and slowly build it. Right. I'm not sure how much you expanded it, but you've stuck to a menu that's not this ginormous menu. You know. You're, yeah. No. You're I, have a, I have a. I have a. You know. You know I got a really small menu. menu. I try and always have at least one pork dish, one duck dish one lamb and a couple fish things like that but i'm a really firm believer in restaurants with small menus yeah like if i go to a restaurant it's got a huge menu i don't even want to eat there because <laughs> i know how things don't move and right. it's just not a good thing so yeah. i do get you know there's people online that there'll be reviews oh small menu all this other things but i really just want to tell them like you really want a place that's small menu right absolutely you want to know that that food is when I walk turning in, over and it hasn't been sitting somewhere forever. You're not managing the bar anymore, right? Is that Andy? Yeah, he's, he's, that. Uh, he's taking all the pressure off me. <laughs> yeah. So he's uh, uh, handling that. Plus, uh, Andy's been adding, uh, and he said he was going to give me some craft cocktails. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he's developing the, the cocktails. Yeah. 
part of it too. Yeah, I mean, we're always going to be a wine club. Right. You know, no matter how you slice it, I we sell forty percent of our sales is wine. Okay. So well, that's, that's great. You know, that's always going to be know what you know what we're known for. So uh, we're talking about craft cocktails. Yeah. You know, of course, you're always going to be uh, known for wine, uh, but and I uh, but you're you're developing craft cocktails too. I think the biggest thing is, is just kind of focusing seasonally um, on, on what we do. So there's 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 a lot of traditional style cocktails you can put a little twist on. But that's the, the biggest thing is to try and kind of take in what's new, what's popular, what's going on in today's market, and then put your twist on it and try and stay seasonal with it. So that's, that's all I really try and do. For you, when you go out, what do you like to do around here? Uh, you know, I actually go out a lot. Uh, I bring my whole family out. I got two little boys, and they have obviously been raised in the restaurant. <laughs> so we go out a lot. Uh, I love going to Gerhardt's. Okay. It's a great restaurant. Yeah, uh, I love going to Hobnob. <laughs> they really are. So anyway, well, I'm going to try some of your food in a little bit, but uh, I guess they're telling me that I'm done. So all right, I uh, appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the time.